Okay, hello again. This is now the Tower of Process Part 14, the fifth card in a Celtic Cross. So, the diagram. Okay, so we've done cards one, two, three goes down below and it's the foundation, four goes to the left and it represents what's passing away. And then the fifth card, if I draw it in here, the fifth card goes up above here, above the first card, and it represents what may come. So the sixth card, which is going to go on the right, represents what will come. So what may come is a possible development, a possible situation, but the questioner has some control over what's shown by the fifth card. So if the fifth card shows the tower reversed and, and upset and things falling apart, you don't have to experience that. Whereas if the sixth, the fifth card shows the sun upright and the, or let's say the world and it represents, it shows success and happiness that may happen, but it won't automatically happen. And that's something for you to remember when, when you turn that card, tell them, tell the questioner, it represents what may come and you've got control over it. So it doesn't have to happen if you don't like the look of it, but I think we have to consider what may come in light of what we've discovered so far from the first and second, third and fourth cards. So if the, if the spread up to this point has shown difficulties in relationships and not getting along with people or being disappointed or discouraged about what life is giving you, and this, the fifth card showing what may come is the sun or the world or the two of cups, then you, it's an indication that there, there may be an improvement in life, in relationships, in situations and conditions, but it won't automatically happen. Whereas if the, if the spread up until now has shown um, let's say good relationships and you get the two of cups in the fifth position then the good relationships can continue or may continue but we have to look at the rest of the cards to see what they show because the fifth is what may come but the sixth is what will come and the ninth represents your hopes and fears which in some way describe future conditions or give you an idea about what's going to happen in the future and the tenth card is the final outcome. So when you're when you're doing when you've turned all ten cards and you've looked at each one individually and spoken about it and what it shows or what's involved with it or what's going on with any particular card. And then maybe you do a summary or an overview. So you start maybe with the past. So you look at the third and the fourth cards for the foundation of what's passing away. Then maybe you look at the first, second and seventh as what's going on right now. And then you look at the fifth, the sixth, the ninth and the tenth as a group to get an idea of what the future looks like. So maybe you've got two good cards and two bad cards in the fifth, sixth, ninth and tenth. So you would talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the future, of what looks good and what, what will take care of itself, as well as what you need to work on if you want things to be better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so it's, it's kind of hard to know what to say about the fifth card in isolation. So um, let's say, and again, it might be easier if we knew the first four cards, but let's say the fifth card is the sun reversed, right? So what may come is disappointment, because if the sun is upright, what may come is overall success and happiness and contentment and a sense of wonder, because it's a child, right? Um, and and babies and, and infants, we, we we don't know what they see. We've forgotten. We were at that age once upon a time. But you don't know what it was like. You've forgotten what it was like to be a baby and what the world looks like through the eyes of a one-year-old or a three-year-old. And 
I'm reminded of Mary Poppins in the book Mary Poppins I don't know about the movie I don't think I ever saw it but in the book the children in Mary Poppins are told they're, they're, they're able to speak to animals right and they're told that one day they'll wake up and they'll forget that they ever were able to talk to animals. And then one day they wake up and they can't remember, they have no recollection that they were able to talk to animals. Which makes makes me wonder, what's it like being a three-year-old? We, we, we look at three-year-olds or two-year-olds and we think well, we know what's going on, but we don't. And so maybe there's a certain amount of that with the sun card upright that you've got a child's way of looking at the world. So you see possibilities, you're not tainted, you're not damaged by propaganda and you haven't seen, well maybe you have, seen 12 million advertisements telling you unless you drink this stuff you're a nobody um, or unless you wear these kinds of clothes then you're defective in some way. So with the sun reversed as what may come, if instead of predicting that you will be disappointed I think instead of giving a prediction like that you might want to say if you find that things don't go the way you want or the way they ought to go or the way you expect because it's the sun right if things don't go the way you want or the way you would prefer don't be don't be surprised because what may come is the sun upside down you may try certain things and, and they don't work. Does that mean that you give up completely? Probably not because it's a sun card. If we got the, the devil reversed in the future and we said something like, if things don't go the way you want, give up, you know, start again because it's the devil. And if you keep going with things that you don't want or don't enjoy, you're gonna get more and more trapped. Do you know what I mean? It's the difference between the devil and the sun and what you would say based on the card itself. So you, you can have the same, the same circumstance of things not going well, but how you handle it with the sun reversed is um, remember you can always try again or remember that you can, you can um, reorganize or restructure or have a different plan or make a small tweak to make it better, to get to where it is that you want to go. Whereas if it's the devil, can't find the devil in here. If it's the devil reverse, then, you know, it's just not gonna work. You're on, if, if things go badly, it's because you, it, they're not right, or you are not a good fit with them, or you should be doing something different. So you, you, maybe with the devil reverse, you're able to warn the person about how to proceed more wisely or there's going to be a need to proceed with wisdom because the devil is reversed in the future whereas with the sun reversed in the future things don't go your way it happens and we know this so don't worry about it um or else let's say the future or it's what make so with with the fifth card it's what may come so you the questioner or the question has a choice when it comes to the conditions and the situation shown by the fifth card if they like the look of it then they can have it let's say the chariot represents travel maybe not so easy right now but you can always expand your mind if you can't expand your physical borders um, so if the chariot is upright as what may come, then if you get ideas about expansion or about traveling or about expanding your understanding of life and living or taking a, a university course, if you get ideas like that, go for it. Because it, whereas, whereas you, you're, you're sort of paying attention to the ideas that come to you and relating them to what's shown by the fifth card. Whereas if the fifth card is, no, all I'm getting is, I don't want just major trumps here. Um, let's see the 10 of batons, right? So this shows somebody or a situation where you keep plodding on 
and eventually you'll reach the end. But maybe what you ought to do is stop for a moment and reorganize your burdens. So maybe what you do is you look at the different areas of your life and reorganize them so that you can handle more or handle it better. So maybe what you do is before you go shopping, make a shopping list and you go into the store knowing what you want rather than going to one end of the store to get something and then you go to the other end of the store to get something else. Then you go to go back to the first end of the store to get something that was right beside the first item that you picked up. That kind of thing is kind of a waste of time and a waste of energy. So maybe with the ten of batons, it's something as simple as that. Have a shopping list before you go somewhere. Or else what you do is you've got an aged parent that you have to look after and you've got children that you're dealing with and you've got a job that you're dealing with and you've got the need for alone time. So how can you sort these four different areas of your life so that you can do more of it or do it better or do it so that it's less stressful? So this is, I forget, this is, let's say this is what may come. So then with this one, you may begin to feel overwhelmed and blindly persevering, but it's maybe not such a good, it's maybe not so efficient. So what you do is you structure and you re take, take a day to reorganize or to think things through. Whereas if the ten of batons is upside down, it means you feel overwhelmed, but because this card represents what may come, if you find that things are not flowing and things are getting in each other's way, then you don't have to do anything about it. If you leave it alone and don't try and fix it, it'll, it'll sort itself out. So you, you, you can take pressure from yourself by not trying to fix what either can't be fixed or what doesn't need to be fixed from the ten of batons upside down it's what may come okay i don't want to make this too long um so i'll stop and um i i've been looking at comments if, if when people say nice things i don't want to reply to every nice thing and say thanks or something like that so if you left a, a nice comment and I haven't replied I appreciate it but I, I just probably am not going to thank everybody in person but it doesn't mean that I don't want to thank you um, so that's that's part of it I'm, I meant to do that because somebody who's a new subscriber wrote and wrote and left a comment about she enjoyed the videos and so on and she was a new subscriber and I thought I should say thanks very much but it just takes so long anyway and the other thing is that the next one is going to be if you remember a couple of videos ago I talked about name your path name the path that you're on and I'd like to talk a little bit more about naming the path that you're on and the value of it and also the fact this the, the the main point is I want to say you don't have to use a real word you you you, you can make up words and so the example that at this moment I think I'm going to give is you can talk you, let's say you're on the path of the mother and you want to be mothering but you can also be on the path of motherness even though there is no such word, or you can be in the path of mother ability, which is a different kind of thing from motherness. So I want to talk about, or give you an idea about, you can make up your own words, and also the value of, and how it, how it changes how you see your situation when you've got an idea of the name of the path that you're on. That's it for the moment. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in a few days. Okay, bye-bye.